it's Nicole the Math Lady. Today we're working on division by zero. And I want to tell you right off the bat, we've got a rule. Here's my rule. Can't divide by zero. Have you noticed that? I know all the way up until now we've done a whole year and we've never been dividing by zero. Zero cannot be the divisor in a division problem. Let's take a look at some division problems to kind of see why. Let's start with this multiplication fact, four times two equals eight. We might remember way back in lesson one, we talked about multiplication facts, might have been one or two, and that we can take a multiplication fact and turn it into two division facts. We can do eight divided by two, and it'll give us four. Or we can do eight divided by four, and it'll give us two. Let's try this when we have a zero. In, our, in the mix here. So let's do 4 times 0 equals 0. Let's try to write our two division facts. So if I did 0 over 4, does that give me 0? Yes, it does. But if I tried 0 over 0, does that give me 4? Hmm. No, it does not. In fact, if this said 6 times 0 equals 0, and I did 0 over 0, it wouldn't give me 6. It wouldn't give me 8. It wouldn't give me 10. This is the one instance where it, it, it doesn't work. We can't have 0 on the bottom of a fraction, our divisor. It's just a rule. Okay, now you might ask, okay, that's good to know that rule, but like, why should I care? Well, let's give you a few problems where we actually apply this so you know when we're solving for this equation, there is a number, a numeric value, that cannot satisfy our equation. Take a look. Let's say I have the equation y equals 4 over x plus 2. So I could create a chart or a table where I get values for x so I can plot y, right? Except for there is one value that does not work for this. And remember, if the rule is you can't divide by 0, well, how do we find out what number cannot be here? x plus 2, if we set it equal to 0, and we solve for x, we would get x is a negative 2. So that means for this, x cannot equal a negative 2, meaning we can put 1 into this equation, 4 into this equation, 8, negative 4, negative 10, but one number we cannot put in is a negative 2. Take a look at this example. We have y equals 3 over x squared minus 1. So we have to figure out what number can this not work where 0 will be on the bottom. So what's the number that this equation where x will be certain, a certain number where it'll give us a 0 and that just cannot work. So let's solve for 0. We're going to do x squared minus 1 equals 0. And whatever we get for x, we know as a number it cannot be. So x squared equals, to get rid of the negative 1, we're going to add 1 to both sides. So we get a 1. And then we know x is, what times what is 1? Well, we know we could use a 1. It also could be a negative 1, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So here, this one has actually two numbers that x cannot be. x cannot be 1, and x cannot be a negative 1. Okay, so this is just something to always watch out for as you're solving your equations. If you've got something on the bottom that'll give you a zero, you got to make sure you tell us, hey, Nicole, it can't be that answer. All right, that's it. I've got a few practice problems for you on the website to practice this concept. I think you've got this, though. This is not too bad. All right, it's Nicole Thomas. I'll see you next time. Hi, Nicole Thomas. Nicole the math lady. I gave you my last name. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.